So here's the graph of this piecewise function. The left side of the piecewise function is a downward facing quadratic. The right side of this function is a linear function. Okay, that's just going straight off of these equations. At one, they do not have the same y value. The left side and the right side do not have the same y value at one. Remember we talked about this being not continuous when we talked about piecewise functions. So if we talked about the two-sided limit, which this asks about a one-sided limit, but if it said the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x and it didn't have a plus or a minus afterwards, that limit would be does not exist because when you follow the function from the left side, you're approaching negative 1. When you follow it from the right side, you're approaching negative 4. Those two values don't agree, so since you're not approaching the same value, the two-sided limit does not exist. But when you talk about the individual limits from the left side, our function is approaching negative 1. So that's the answer to this question, the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of this function, f of x, is negative 1. That's the answer to this question. Um, the limit as we approach 1 from the right, which they didn't ask us, but I want to talk about it, is negative 4. That's what you get when you plug 1 into the right side of the equation. If there's a minus after the number, you're looking at the left side of the function. X is less than 1, that's left. So I just plugged in 1 in for X. That's how I got negative 1. If there's a 1 and a plus, then it would be the right side. So I would use when X is greater than 1. Right, plug in one, the answer would be negative four. But they only have to look at the one Yes, they're only looking for the one from the left. I'm just using this as a multi example here. Okay. And they didn't ask us for the two side limit. If there wasn't a plus or a minus, you'd have to plug it into both pieces. If it agrees, if they were both negative one, then this two sided limit would be negative one. Um, or if they were both negative four, or if they were both some other number, that would be the limit. But since they are not the same number, the two-sided limit for this function does not exist as we approach one. Anywhere else, you're good. If we were approaching zero, we're approaching zero, or as we approach zero, we're approaching the same y value from both sides. Okay? Zero, we're good. Uh, positive five, we would be good. Except one, that's where those two don't approach the same line. All right, now, number 21 is not a piecewise function as it is written, but do you recall when we did absolute value functions, we wrote absolute value functions as piecewise functions briefly? Okay, well, if you don't remember, I'm going to show it to you anyways. All right. So, this wants us to evaluate the limit of 1 from the right. Now, notice, if we plug in 1, if we just plugged it in, here's what we would get. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 3 times 0 over negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That's 0 over 0. That's what we call an indeterminate form. Indeterminate, and I can't spell and talk at the same time, indeterminate form. I think I've mentioned that before in here. Zero over zero is an indeterminate form. The function is not defined there, but we can still figure it out. Okay, we can still figure it out using the fact that we can express this as a piecewise function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this... First of all, when there is a negative in front of the variable, I'm going to start by factoring that out. 
Now, the absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Okay, the absolute value of negative All right, the absolute value of negative 1 right here is positive 1. So, this is um, the first thing that we need to do to this expression. Okay, you've got to factor out that negative. Now let's write it as a piecewise function. If you were a call, when we have to write these as piecewise functions, we changed the sign or we multiplied it by negative 1 when x was less than, in this case, 1. That's the changing point. Okay, x minus 1 is equal to 0, x equals 1 is the changing point. For the second piece, we kept everything the same and dropped the absolute value when it was greater than or equal to that number. Okay, this should kind of be review. Okay, let's simplify these expressions a little bit more because there's some things that they have in common. So we've got negative 3 times x minus 1 on the top. How about we take out a negative from the bottom as well? And we'll do that same thing to the second one. Take out the negative from the bottom. So the x minus 1's cancel. So the top piece is positive 3 because negative 3 divided by negative 1 is positive 3. And the bottom piece is negative 3. So essentially what I've done is I've simplified this to the point that 3 times the absolute value of x minus negative x plus 1 over negative x plus 1 is equal to 3 when x is less than 1 and it's equal to negative 3 when x is greater than or equal to 1. Now you may not believe me on that. So some limits that occur at poles in functions. So let's look at number 31. If you will recall, when we talked about piecewise functions, we had two different types of piecewise functions. We had the ones where the left side of the function uh, looked like something and the right side of the function looked like something. That's what we just did. When it's less than a value, when it's greater than a value, we had two separate uh, sides to the function. We also had the ones that had a hole in it. So when x is not equal to negative 3 and when x is equal to negative 3, I'm going to go over really quickly just how to graph this because most people when they look at this question if they're asked what's the limit as x approaches negative 3 what do you think the answer that they give us? If I just asked you without showing you anything about the problem what would you tell me the limit as we approach negative 3 is? What would be your guess? It's okay if you're wrong. I'm just asking you what would be your guess if you if you had to tell me right now, what's the limit as x approaches negative 3, what would you say? What do you think of that number? Two? Two? Two. Okay. Why did you pick two? Okay, it does have much juice. Most people say the answer is three. Most people say the answer is three because they say, oh, well, x is approaching negative 3. Well, when x is negative 3, it's 3. Okay? But let's look at what this function actually looks like. Okay? What this piecewise function is saying is uh, everywhere except when x is negative 3. So when x is not equal to negative 3, everywhere else, our function is a line with a y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1 half. So let me graph that. Y-intercept of 2, slope of 1 half. Up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. Okay? This is what it looks like, except at negative 3. It's not, that does not apply at negative 3. So I'm going to put a hole right there where my graph would go. Hopefully you can tell that there's a hole and it's not just another point. Okay, there's a hole there at negative 3. Because 
when x does equal negative 3, the y value is positive 3. Okay, so f of negative 3 is 3. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that that's not the limit as we approach negative 3. Because what the limit says is as we're following our function, okay, as our x values are getting closer and closer to negative 3, what are our y values getting closer and closer to? Where are the y values headed right there? One point five. One point five. The limit of this function as we approach negative three is equal to two plus negative three over two, which is two minus one and a half. Yeah, yeah, two minus one and a half, which is one half. Okay, so it's counterintuitive to me. When you see these where there's the x is equal to and the x is not equal to, you're going to plug that number into the not equal to piece. Because that's the function. Everywhere except at that point, that is what the function looks like. So that's where you're headed. It's just at the very last second, it jumps up to that other point. So that's what we're approaching as we get closer and closer to negative 3. We're approaching 1 half, and then at the last second, it jumps up to positive 3. So the limit is 1 half. That's the y value you're approaching. Okay? Thank you. All right. Now, what type of function is number 35? What do we call this? Number 35. What type of function is that? Sorry, so with an R. Rational. Okay? Rational function. When we've got variables in the numerator and the denominator, that's a rational function. So what kind of funky things happen with rational functions? We only talked about these for about three weeks. What happened with rational functions? There was that really weird word. Sounds like a dirty word. Asymptotes. We've got vertical asymptotes. We've got horizontal asymptotes. Slant asymptotes, what other things happen with, with rational functions? Y-intercepts, yeah, we talked about y-intercepts, x-intercepts. How about, what did I have at the top of the page? Holes. Okay, that's probably what's going on here. Okay, uh, now, your first instinct when you're evaluating a limit should be to plug in that number, okay? You should always try plugging in the number first. Um, now, what happens when we plug in this number? We get 0 on the top, and we get 4 minus 6 plus 2. That's 0 on the bottom. That's that indeterminate form again. Indeterminate form. So that means we're going to have to do some kind of algebraic manipulation to fix it so that we don't have 0 over 0 anymore. So I'm going to factor, right? That was always the solution when we had rational functions. It was to factor. And in most cases, our problem ended up canceling, which it does in this case. The numerator can't be factored. The denominator is x minus 2 times x minus 1, so the x minus 2s cancel. Notice my limit notation is still there because I haven't plugged anything in yet. So this function simplifies to keep that negative in front, 1 over x minus 1. Now I'm going to plug in the number. Okay, that negative, I'm going to slide it up to the numerator, 2 minus 1. So we've got negative 1 over 1. The limit of this function as we approach 2 is negative 1. Now, if we were approaching 0, we wouldn't even have to worry about that. And we would not even have to worry about all the factoring and stuff. And the limit as we approach 0 would be negative 1 over negative 1. The limit as we approach 0 is positive 1. Okay. Again, the question didn't ask for that. I'm just pointing out the fact that limits are value specific. Okay. As we're approaching 2, it's negative 1. As we approach something else, it's going to be something else. 